It's Wednesday. And so that must mean it's this week on the E for the 27th day of March 2019. We have no guests today, but we're always joined. By, oh, my name is Ron Chuckett. Yeah, you probably should know that by now. And, of course, he is Dave Gardner, chief cook, bottle washer, and laundry king of Saugus, Massachusetts. How are you, Dave? Yeah, I ended up uh, posting a video the other day just for fun. I had all the jerseys. They were clean washed and dried and i just threw them all on the floor um while i was do doing the stats or whatever i was doing i was like boy that's a funny picture you know so uh so i posted that up i got a you know a couple of funny comments from it but that's exactly what it looks like on my house on saturday afternoon and, and also on wednesday morning as i wash all the jerseys <laughs> you know it could be worse they could be dirty and then your dogs could come in and take a nap on them yeah um there's been a, a, a time in the past, not not the hockey jersey, but our regular laundry that we had done and we, we put on the floor as we were doing our loads. And uh, I, I, one of them come down and went to the bathroom on a whole pile of them. It was like, oh, oh my God. Yeah. I mean, it was a while ago and I don't remember the, the situation, but I was just like, what are you doing? But well, we had to rewash that pile. But no, that was my own <laughs> stuff. So. Yeah, fun times. Yeah, a couple people in the them. chat rooms. Uh, Al and Bobby are in the chat. Say, guys, uh, thanks for jumping in here as we, uh, me and Ron, go over what's going on in the East of Massachusetts Roller Hockey League. I uh, want to hit our sponsors real quick, as we always do. I want to thank uh, to um, Paramount Wealth Strategies, Everett Bank, and I got their jersey behind me over here. I like to try to alternate the jerseys behind me as we do the show. Uh, Alpha Omega Hobby in Quincy, and I got to get on and check them out. Alpha Omega Hobby, I think they. They do like the um, the magic, the gathering, and the wizards of the coast, and all that stuff. There, uh, I've never done any of that, but it, it it looks like it would be fun to get on and hang out and watch something like that. Magic is much more oriented towards adults. You don't want to be hanging out with the Yu Gi Oh kids. Nothing wrong with Yu Gi Oh, but those tend to be, ki you know, teenagers and and college age kids, and the Pokemon is 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 actual kids. Oh yeah. So I want to all fun games and there, you know, it's get some social interaction. The store I used to work at ran Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments for years and they buy a lot of stuff. Yeah. I mean, my, my friend Jake, who's involved in that has, has been doing that for years. I remember going down to the local mall and he was working at some of these shops here. So he knows all about that stuff. Uh, continuing on Bates insurance in Medford. They have the cool purple jerseys, the local one Oh three IBEW with the orange jerseys. East Boston Savings Bank. We had Dan Kelly on from East Boston Savings Bank on the show here earlier. Uh, One Call Ventilation. In fact, uh, Steve Fabiano, who works for One Call Ventilation, had to miss his game last night because of an emergency call uh, at work with One Call Ventilation. So um, Steve missed the game last night. His team lost, by the way, but he didn't make the game because he was stuck at work. Mm -hmm. uh, Aces, Games, and more in Revere. And I need to zip over there. They have a whole bunch of new Patriots stuff in and also Red Sox stuff. Over at that place, they're, they're games and more, as, as they say. And uh, uh, Ernie Paredes, Ernie 11, who's doing some uh, equipment repair. And he's also designing pants. He's going to be trying to design some pants if you were interested in buying pants for the league. And his new jerseys just came in last night. Hard to tell, but they are Boston College. They are maroon, gold, and white with his logo on the side up there. So thanks oh, okay. who sponsored that. And I do have one last set coming in. It's the red and white set should be in another week or two. Cause I just ordered them and everybody that ordered jerseys in the second round. Um, those are coming in either late this week or early next week. Um, but they are done and they're, they're getting ready to ship out to me in the whole bit. So hopefully everybody that ordered, and the second round will have their jerseys next week. And, um, yeah, so that's a little quick roundup with our sponsors and the jerseys. They look very sharp. See, I would have guessed uh, with the way that's lit out, I thought Calgary Flames, old school Calgary Flames. Yeah, the red ones are. The the, the new what? ones coming in that are red and white, those are the Atlanta Calgary Flame jersey. But these are actually – it's tough to see with a webcam, but these are actually maroon. Yep. It's not as soon a very as you said it, my eyes kind of adjusted to it. Yeah, it's not a very dark maroon by any means. Um, but it's definitely BC colors, and it looks really nice. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So there you go. All right, did you play this week? No, I don't think I played on Saturday or Tuesday this week. I've been kind of doing ref duty. Saturday we had a lot of referees out. Tuesday last night we had um, two or three refs 
bank out last minute. So I ended up roughing three games last night. So I haven't played much, so I have not been able to uh, score any game tying goals or game winning goals in the last couple of weeks. Before we get into Saturday, what does just a question off the top of my head, what does it take to be a ref in your league? Um, the willingness to listen to people yell at you when they make mistakes. That's what it comes down to. And you got to know the game. You know, I'm not saying we just throw anybody in, but a lot of the guys in the league that referee, um, some actually, believe it or not, are patched. Some actually referee in ice hockey league. So, I mean, I know people make fun of our referees and they say, you know, oh, these just, you know, whatever. But no, some of these guys, including myself, at one point, I was I took the test and I was patched. And there's a handful of guys that, that either have or are actively doing refereeing in other leagues. And yes, we do have a couple of guys that just volunteer and help me out. Um, but but everybody has has usually been in the league a while or been involved in hockey. So it's not like we're taking someone that's never played the game or that's not familiar with the game and throwing them out there, you know. And again, after 20 years of doing draft leagues, everybody kind of knows everybody. So it's, you know, it's not like we need to go out and you need to be a level three certified referee to ref in our league. It's just not that type of league, you know. Right. No, it's that people get along well. But this was kind of wondering just if there was any certification that was required. It, it You know, s some people have it. It's not required, you know, and th there's some guys, you know, that have tried to referee and just, just weren't that good at it and said, I'm not that good. I don't want to do it. And they don't do it anymore. And, and there's other people that, 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 you know, stuck with it and, and get a little bit better. But again, it's, it's all subjective. It oh, really sure. is when you're out there. I mean, I, I've been playing in the hockey league since I was 16 back in 1983. Okay. So been playing a long time. I've yet to find a league that I've played in or that I've broadcast or been associated with, you know, going around the country that has had good referees. They don't exist. Not, there's only so many to go around. And 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 even then, that they, they just don't exist. So I mean, you do the best you can with what you got, and you just try to play the game and the whole bit. But mm -hmm. um, yeah. So that that that's where it is. Well, let's get right to it. A busy six games on Saturday, and it started with Ghost Rider putting two touchdowns on faceoff, fourteen to five. Well, at least both goalies showed up this week at seven a.m. Though it really didn't make for a better game. With sub goalie Joe Mar or sub Mar Joe Marino leading the way, Ghost Rider was unstoppable. It was not the game to miss if you are a Ghost Rider player, though two players did miss the stat fest. And it may be time to trade Al Padico to a bad team. Perhaps fade off fourteen to five. It just nothing went right for faceoff. It they just couldn't get anything going. It just that's just how it went. Uh, Ghost Rider was missing a couple of players, so Joey Marino came in from the Tuesday League and filled in for, I don't know if he filled in for their first place guy or their second round guy, I forget, but, you know, he had a few goals um, that they just played really well. They, you know, just a good job by them. It, it just, it happens. You know, it just, you know, the week before, I think we had all the games or one or two goals, and this week we start off 14 to five. You know, it, it just, it happens, and uh, yeah. Al, uh, I don't know if it's Panico or Panico. I, I, I never get it right, you know, and he tells me how to pronounce his name. Uh, but he's always been on a last place team, Ron. Uh, just some, oh. some guys, just that's just how it goes. And so Al, Al's on a team that is, you know, middle of the pack, maybe maybe lower third. Um, and so it just doesn't seem right having him not in last place. So we might have to trade him. So So he feels more at home. I bet he doesn't, but thanks for asking. Just remember, steam cards, coffee orders, maybe a pastry now and then would be uh, nice. Coffee and donuts always will help out your situation. <laughs> At 8 o'clock, National Treasure dumped, leaving Las Vegas 11 to 4. Team 7 and 9 men up to see who gets an upgrade. And thanks to the Saturday return of Brian Estrella, it won't be National Treasure. He scored 5 in the cupcake win. A kinder, gentler George Rahman had zero penalties. Ryan Hayes had a man cold and had another Celeste type of performance. Yeah, Ryan Hayes, the goalie, uh, showed up sick, played more like Jimmy Celeste than Ryan Hayes. Jimmy Celeste is our whipping boy goaltender in the league, if you haven't noticed that already. Um, and uh, it just didn't go well for leaving Las Vegas. Brian Estrella come back, played with his brother Joe on National Treasure, lit it up. And uh, you know, I think Brian was shaking his head. He didn't. Re he didn't re-sign up for this season. I'm thinking that he he probably could have led the league in scoring if he signed up, and it might have even taken the team to the championship game. So we'll see what Brian wants to do going forward on Saturdays. But um, he had a he had a really good game lead, leading that team to the win. 
Why didn't he sign up? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I don't know if he was playing somewhere else. It was a work thing or, or, or what it was new girlfriend. I, you know, I could, it could be anything like that, but, um, he didn't renew for this season here. And so he just fills in from time to time. And got five. That's pretty good. At yep. nine o'clock kick-ass beat Arsenal seven to four, a bottom six matchup. Went as about as well as expect we expected. Mike DeVincent had four goals before getting hit in the nether regions and missing some time on the bench with an ice pack of uh, no fun for him on a Saturday night. Mike Parkinson signed again in the net for kick ass, and apparently the quig diet is working wonders for him. John Suey se still seems tired since steak and BJ Day back on the 13th. Yeah, Suey's uh seems really tired since that day he didn't show up last week this week he showed up a little slow so i don't know if he's still feeling the effects from that day or not but mike parkinson let me tell you he came back in he took some seasons off uh he won a championship uh, with me and the and quig and the maple leafs uh, a few years ago and he's come back with a vengeance holy cow i don't remember this guy being that good in net even though he won a title with us but he's been solid for this kick-ass team, standing on his head. He made one save where I don't, he was like rolling upside down or something like like Dominic Hasek, and someone batted it out of the air, and he just stuck his glove up and caught it. And it was just it was a very impressive save. It was so Mike Parkson uh, playing real well. And, yeah, poor Mike defense it was standing in front of the net, and someone shot it and got him square. And uh, <sighs> so, uh, yeah, so um, one of the teammates had to apply an ice pack and – and there we there we go. Watched a couple episodes of The Sopranos too, right? Yeah, he did. He stayed in the game though. It's a hockey player. <laughs> it's what Sometimes. you do. Yes. Anyway, 10 a.m. Rumblefish beat Snake Eyes. Oh no, it's on in the thing here. Last week, last place Snake Eyes beat the first. On second place this week and gave the soon to be downgraded team a game, but fell seven to four. Six different fish scored in this one. Only half her had more than one goal and should be a nice upgrade for another team. Nick Delitsky only fell three times this season high. Yeah, Nick did well, only falling down a few times. Uh, it was actually a decent game. There was an open net goal at the end to make it 7-4. Otherwise, it was a pretty close game. So Snake Eyes is on the right track. Um, got more trades coming this week, I believe. We had a player drop out, so we're going to you know, bring in a new guy, maybe shuffle a couple of guys around this week. And um, you know, these are two teams that are uh, kind of on, on the you know, the bullseye target to make some moves with us. We're just trying to adjust some things. we still got five games to go in playoffs, so there's still time to try to make some adjustments and correct some of the things that were going wrong this season. And that's about it. Nick, a new skater? He's played a few seasons with us. Um, he has more heart than talent. Let's just say that. Um, he, he's a super nice guy, though. Uh, he actually he referees for us on Saturday. And uh, and uh, when he scores a goal, we, we, we do all – both teams celebrate when he scores goals. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Well, that wouldn't be a Saturday without some kind of controversy. In fact, I got a message from somebody after this game was finished on Saturday. A great game between Gone in 60 seconds and The Rock was even steaming. It would need bonus time. Chris Brulio had four breakaway chances. Four in overtime. The goalie, Justin Burnett, would stop them all. But on the last one, he pulled a groin and was hurt. A subsequent pass by Spulio to CJ for the goal in the open net was waved off due to the injury. A good time was had by Paul, although I can't think that uh, poor Justin had a good time there. No, it was really strange. I mean, late in the third and overtime, Spuglio probably had four breakaways, five clean breakaways, and Justin stopped them all. And then that one last one was about a minute to go in overtime. And Spuglio came in, he cut to the left, and Justin went down to make the save. And he made the save, and he immediately like, just put his head down. And he knew he was hurt. The ball went in the corner. Spuglio fires it in front of CJ, who fired in the net, but the, the goalie was down, and he had no chance to make the save. And it was it it was just a terrible decision to try to make. You know, the referees looked at me. I looked at them, and it's like, well, the goalie's hurt. He has no way of getting in the play to make the save. Maybe he makes it. Maybe he doesn't. You know, it's hard to say because it was bang, bang, but he definitely mm -hmm. was, was down. And so, you know, and he limped off the court, so we couldn't even finish overtime. So I guess it was a knee, not a groin. I don't know if that's any better or worse. He didn't play last night in the Tuesday league. 
So I need to follow up with him to see how yeah. he's doing. But yeah, so we 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 just decided we talked to always said, look, the goalie was is injured, couldn't make the play. So we decided to just go with the five to five tie. And you know, sadly, that's how it went. I will say on a, on a um, other note, though, so Chris Buglio, the captain of Gone in sixty seconds, uh, sent me a message today, and I guess he says he was looking at his stats, and he's now up over twenty five hundred career points in the league. Wow! Yeah, yeah. And I said, Chris is probably a lot more than that because we still have probably five or six Tuesday seasons to go, maybe seven. So, and I know he played in that, so he's probably got more coming once it's all said and done. But yeah, good for him, and and I'm and I'm glad that um that people are actually going on to the stat site and, and seeing what we've done because we keep adding to that. You know, every week we keep adding new seasons, uh, and eventually I'm I'm thinking the next month we'll be all caught up and we'll have all the career stats up. That's amazing. That's that's incredible. The last game of the day, Raising Arizona 10, fast time 6. This one came down to the subs, as we predicted, with both teams missing a gaggle of players. Subs were dealt like cards at a Carson City saloon. You know, the algorithm's getting funnier. When the dust settled on this full array, angry Dave Kruger and his team skated away with a win. Arguably the second worst player in the league scored a beauty on an open net goal with 33 seconds to play. Yeah, not much to say about this. I think one team had four subs and the other team had two or three. So we, we played out the best we could. At least it was a somewhat close game. But yeah, Mike Mercier, um, he actually scored the first goal of the game for raising Arizona. Then late in the game, they had him out there uh, with a goaltender out. And um, he got he he kept hemming the people in. And, and Mike um, is, is just an okay skater. You know what I mean? And he's an older guy like myself, but he, he kept forcing the people back and they curl and they finally tried to shoot it by him. He knocked it down out of midair and rolled it and it went into the open net. And it was just really hysterical how he did that. But good for Mike picking up uh, two goals on the day. I'm not sure if he made star of the week or not, but um, it, was, it was good to see him uh, out there late in the game and contributing to that team and getting them a, a much needed win. And uh, they beat Courtney Brown, which makes it even better. I just shut that window or else I would look. All right, so standings and stats from Saturday's league. Yeah, let's see if I can uh, share that right here. So we'll go to my stats page, and hopefully that go. will come up for you. There yep. we go. So, yeah, so we got uh, – oh, is that uh, – yeah, that is Saturday. I'm sorry. So, yeah, Rumblefish, 6-1-1-1. One, and one, and one. So they're in first place, followed by The Rock, who has lost and then tied. So they've had a – Tough go, but Ghost Rider with Al Panico on the way up there in third place, tied with Face Off and Raising Arizona. And then uh, as we get down to the other teams, Fast Times and National Treasure and the whole bit, all the way down to Gone in 60 Seconds and Snake Eyes. And we kind of hope to make a couple of moves with the bottom three teams to get them a little, you know, some minor help as we go into the, the last third of the season. There's only four points, though, separating third and 11th. Yeah, the, the top five or six are, are really good, you know. Um, between yeah, one and six is only four points, and then even national treasures right there with nine. Um, so yeah, so I mean, we've done a pretty good job with most teams. Again, we we, we do what we can, um, right. but it, it's tough to make 12 completely even teams. Just want to take a look at the league leaders real quick. So Mike DeVincent there, um, nut shot aside, 32 points, good for him as he's uh, leading the league on that kick ass team. Uh, Shawnee Andrews uh, of Ghost Rider and Tony Laverde are both tied with 27. Uh, Kuz, you know, Chris Kuzak of uh, the uh, Leaving Las Vegas team, he, he's having a bad season, but he's up there, what, top five scoring. So to have a bad season to be top five in scoring, good for him. Tied for fourth. Yep. 25 nice. points, yeah. Yeah, nice to see that. Uh, game-winning goals on the right-hand side. we got a whole bunch of guys with game-winning goals all tied at two, so I don't even need to go over that list. Uh, power play goals, Johnny Logan, uh, another guy that's um, kind of uh, offensively challenged, let's say. He actually plays more defense, but uh, but good for Johnny there. Two power play goals. I think he got him on the, on the same game, actually, maybe even the same shift. So wow. Johnny lead, yeah, leading the league in power play goals. Uh, Liam, penalty minute leader, no surprise there. Yeah, and then our goalie no, there is applauding. <laughs> uh, Steve DePrado uh, is is one of the uh, on Rumblefish is one of the better goalies in the league. But we'll see what happens when we make some adjustments to that team there. And that's a quick look at our league leaders on the Saturday league. All right, I lost my mouse. There we go. So now let's go to the games of Tuesday, the 26th, which was last night. I didn't get any 
excited messages back. So uh, you're just as much in the dark as I am. Uh, Tango and Cash at 630. Beat stop for my mom will shoot seven to three. First and third place clash, and it wasn't much of a matchup. After stop went up three to one after one, the next six goals went to Tango, including a sweet goal by Meads that brought a tear to Joey Marino's eye. I'm sorry. The only blemish of this game was Dennis McGonagall saying he didn't like the dirt movie on Netflix. The game was paused for a minute while the algorithm collected himself from such a horrible sin. Yeah, you know, we were talking about it, and everybody was, you know, talking about the dirt and Motley Crue and reliving some good times, and, and Dennis is like, I didn't like it. And we, we did. We had to stop the game and, and calm everybody down and make sure that, you know, no, nothing was going to get out of hand when Dennis said that, and we all were kind of shocked about it. Um, but, you know, we did eventually get back to the game and finish the game. And good that, for you, Dennis. <laughs> you be honest. You, you be a trailblazer. Oh man, not not with that though. I mean, be a trailblazer someplace else. You know. I don't like either. <laughs> Shh, don't tell me. Oh, that. all right. Seven <laughs> over the top, which that little thing was by me beating Rambo eleven to nine. Mike Arsenal told his team to throw defense out the window. Don't they do that every week? You know, the, the Rambo team has been a – I think they've got the most goals, but they're also a 500 team, so they tend to score a lot but give up one more. It's just like watching the 77 Red Sox. We'll, yeah. we'll and score went, six and allow seven, yep. They, and, they tried to play defense, and they had a couple of low-scoring games that they won, and they're like, wow, this defense thing is getting us some wins, but it's not as much fun playing. No. So they went back to the all-out offensive mm -hmm. style. And um, and another another high scoring game resulting in a loss. Rambo was missing both Ventura brothers, which is an upgrade and a downgrade all at the same time. <laughs> that's what like, kind of donut that's like do you having, like algorithm? What's your donut of choice? Ha having having Nick Ventura and Greg Ventura is like having Pedro Ramirez and Ramon Ramirez or Martinez. Martinez. Remember the, remember the Red Sox pitches? They had Pedro and Ramon. Yep, brothers. Pedro was phenomenal, and Ramon was. Not phenomenal. That's what it's yeah. like having Venturas. Over the top, it shot Andrew subbing for Dave Diemi, and that was the key in an overcoming a 4-1 first period deficit and turning it into an 11-9 win. Yeah, uh, they were actually missing three players. They were missing, I think, they're Nick Bertacci, which is their top guy, Mark Docklian, who's not a top guy, and Dave Niemi, who I think is – probably arguably the worst player on Tuesday night. So Sean subbed in and says, make sure that you write down that I'm subbing for the worst guy. Okay. 830. Jim Griffin scored two goals for Rocky and that matches his output for all the 2017 and 20 of 2017 and 2018. That was enough to humiliate the last place Lords five to three. CJ had another three goals. AK finally played like AK again and played a big role in that for the Rocky win. But the Lord's Jay Surrett had two assists in another disappointing outing. Just tell us how the algorithm really feels. Jim Griffin, uh, he's been with us, I think, since opening day on Tuesday night back in 2001. He's been around a long, long time, and he's never improved. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Um, 18 years, huh? But he's a likable guy. He's like the, the Nick DeLateschi on Tuesday night. He's a likable guy. He's a funny guy. He's funny on Facebook. Um, but, uh, out on the court, uh, you'd rather have him on Facebook than on the court, let's say, but he's been around a long time. And, and last night he showed up, uh, and they put him up on full and he stood in front of the net and he just started banging home the passes like nobody's business. He got two goals in a game. And again, I, I don't think he's had two goals in a game since, uh, Gilligan's Island went off the air. So, I mean, it's been a long time, but congratulations to Griff. He got two of the five goals in, uh, in a very low scoring win. That is low scoring for this league. In the last game, it's hard to do an accurate assessment of the expendables and cliffhanger because so many regulars were missing. Safe to say that Dan Lope's six sub goals may have helped in the expendables nine to six win. Cliffhanger continues to free fall in stats and attendance. Yeah, not much to say about this. I'm just going to take my papers and just put them right over here. I mean, there was this 
boatloads of guys missing in that late game last night. I don't know if there was a Bruins game, a Red Sox game. I don't know what happened, but one team was missing four guys. One team was missing three. It's just so we just threw guys in and played, and and that was that. And let's just go on to the standings. All right, no, not before I revealed this week's hero award is given to the veteran Dennis McGonagall of Tango and Cash. He may be Dave scapegoat that, but that's my hero. Dennis was the only player on Tuesday night to say he didn't like the Netflix original movie about Motley Crue, the dirt that's instant hero material. All right. I'm giving you a hard time about that, but talk about the movie for a sec because you, because you were raving about it and how good it was. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, me and the wife watched it, and of course, you know, we grew up, you know, going to Motley Crue concerts, and even before I met her, I was big into Motley Crue. Motley Crue was probably, I, I liked Rush and Motley Crue back when I grew up in the uh, the early '80s. Those are my two favorite bands, and uh, not, not that I was a hardcore fan. I, I don't know everything about them, but when this movie came out, it was kind of a nice trip down memory lane, lane watching the dirt. And a lot of guys in the league are uh, musicians or heavy metal guys, and they enjoyed it too. And it just was, um, it wasn't a hundred percent accurate. And there was people that are actually ripping it apart and they're like, well, this, this doesn't make sense. And that's not how this happened. But it was a, it was a fairly decent representation of kind of how they got together and, and the story of the band. And I thought it was done well enough. It was entertaining enough. It gave you an idea what happened. And again, it wasn't 100% accurate, but, um, we really liked it. In fact, the wife and I and, and ordered the two books, the, the Dirt book and then the Nikki Six book. So she's like reading them and all excited now. So it just was it was fun to look back and, and see the, the movie about what this band went through. Even if it wasn't 100 percent accurate, it, it, it gave a pretty good idea what happened in the 80s. And that stuff will just never happen again. It would not be acceptable in, in 2019. It probably wouldn't be acceptable even 10 years ago. But. You know, it wasn't happened, acceptable then, but yeah, but what happened back in the eight? It was such a different time, and and, and I want I don't want to say I lived it because I, I wasn't a rock star, but I lived through those times, and you saw it day by day what was happening, and um, yeah, there was really no internet back then, but you saw it on TV, you read it in the magazines, and it, it was pretty much what that movie said. So was it a movie or a documentary? It was it was it was both. I mean, there was times like there they would have a scene and then one of the actors would look right at the camera and say, it didn't quite happen like this, but we did meet this guy and he did go on to manage the band. Okay. Or, or they'd be on a plane and one of the actors would look at the camera and say, this is a typical day on tour with us. So, I mean, they, they call it breaking the fourth walls, what they call exactly. it. So, so they did the movie, they did it all up, but then they would stop right in the scene and, and like, look at the camera and talk. And that, that really made it cool. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. Didn't mean to cut you off there. Go ahead and standings and stats for Tuesdays. Yeah, so there's a little dirt talk right there. Uh, so let's see if I can share this right here right now. So uh, Tuesday night, uh, Tango and Cash. I thought, geez, you know what I just noticed is that in both leagues, the team wearing the Aces games and more jerseys are in first place in both leagues. Yeah, well, the, uh, the blue one. For them. Yeah, good for them. Uh, so, yeah, so Tango and Cash, 8-1-2. and two. They still only got one loss in regulation here. They're leading everybody with 18 points. And uh, they knocked off fourth place stop from my mom last night. And as, as luck would have it, it was the other two teams in the top four. As the top four and the bottom four actually played out last night, it was um, over the top um, over Rambo. Rambo was up there, I think. Rambo was in third place. And they fell down because of the loss because I think Rocky won. So we had a little – uh, standings uh, movement last night with Rocky winning and Rambo losing. But still, uh, I think Tango and Cash run away. They've got three games left, so I think if they win one more and over-the-top loses, they would clinch the, the overall top seed. And what we do, Ron, uh, on Tuesday, actually uh, just Tuesdays right now, I think, is we do it like there was a, a Southern Hockey League. That What they do is that when the season ends, the top seed picks their playoff opponent. That's interesting. So, in theory, Tango and Cash finishes in first place. They don't have to play Lord to Flatbush. They could say, you know something? We match up better against Cliffhanger. We've smacked them twice. We want to play them. So they could choose to play them. And then over the top, they would say, hey, we want to play so-and-so, you know? Uh, and we go right down the line. So the top three teams pick their matchups. 
and then the fourth one gets who's who's what's left. What would be interesting is if Tango and Cash decided to play second place over the top. That would be kind of funny. I don't think that would happen. Matchup, sure, it would. Yeah, we've had that before where the top seed is like, I want to play a higher seed. And, you know, inevitably they don't. They always play a bottom seed. But yeah, so that's how we do the playoffs. But anyway, you can see it. Uh, Tango and Cash kind of running away, but uh, two, three, four is up for grabs. That's for sure. And then at the bottom, um, Expendables won last night. So that got them out of the basement and it sent Lord to Flatbush back into the basement. And uh, Greg Smith played last night, did not win. Just saying. So they're 0 and 8 with him, then, right? They would be 0 and 8 with him. Yeah. Ernie played two and Tony played one in the three wins. Yes. Uh, take a look at our league leaders here on Tuesday night. Uh, Dan Lopes, who had the five sub goals. By the way, sub goals don't count towards your points, by the way. So, right. But um, he's, he's still leading stuff with 58 points. And that team is in fifth place, though. So offense doesn't necessarily win championships. Uh, Mike Arsenal, which is his line mate, has 44 points. So, again, with the top two guys in scoring are in fifth place. Just throwing that out there. Uh, Brian Estrella, who's on the last place team, is in third in scoring. Tyler Bova, who's on the sixth place team. So you can see the, the bottom teams are well represented in points, just not at the top of the standings. That's just what it is. Scrolling down a little bit here, uh, we got three players with three game-winning goals, Brian CJ and Nick Bertacci. Um, only three power play goals scored this season. That's kind of bizarre. Uh, Mahoney, Bertacci, and Sean Andrews scoring those. Uh, Joe Belfiore is our Tuesday goon with yep. eight penalty minutes. Yep, I would did. imagine with three weeks left that that's probably a done deal. It could be, yep, yep. Um, unless some of these other guys catch up to him, but I'm pretty sure that he's going to take that and take a look at our goalies. Uh, Chris Vittorio just played the one game, so we kind of can't really include him. And Joe B and Cardi was a feeling as well. So, uh, let's get on to our third spot. Uh, AK 4.18 playing for uh, Rocky and Net. A lot of low scoring games of them, and then Garrett Phelan of the first place Tango and Cash team at four point two five. So, and then Andrew Tottenkoff, he was a sub too. So it seems like the the fill in goalies are doing better than our regulars. Maybe we need to rethink the goalies going into next season, and maybe bring up some of these guys that are playing really well. What do you think? Well, Alex is having a great year considering the five wins and all that. I mean, anything under five goals a game is pretty remarkable. In this yeah. League. Yeah. And again, he stopped a boatload of shots last night. And I think he played, um, uh, who did they play last night? Rocky played, I want to say it was, yeah, the Lords of Flatbush, Brian Estrella's team. And, and they were firing shots left and right. And he was picking them off and making saves. He's just a big goalie. He gets square to the net and it's just tough, tough beating him. You really got to, pick a corner to get by him. So AK played really well last night. Congratulations. Okay. So that should, I think just about do it unless you had something else. Yeah, no, um, we'll, uh, we'll wrap that up today. Do a short half hour show. We don't have a guest to yak with there. I still want to um, maybe do something on a Saturday night or a Sunday night, find a couple of guys, come on here and talk some, uh, EMRHL hockey and maybe not do a recap show, but maybe just kind of chat a little bit about what's going on with them and their thoughts on the league. And uh, hopefully next Wednesday we'll have a guest on. I did ask last minute. I asked somebody to come on today, but they couldn't make it. So, um, but next week we'll, we'll try to make an effort to get some bodies on here. All right. So there you go. That's this week on the E for this 27th day of March, 2019. I'm Ron Jucker. He's Dave Gardner, the commissioner of the Eastern Massachusetts Roller Hockey League. Just drop a bug and Dave's here at the rink. You know where he is. Yeah. And along along with a donut and some coffee, and uh, he'll get you on. So until then, we'll see you next week, this week, on the E. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.